and Imam Hussain السلام, left his Hajj going towards the holy city of Karbala or what would become the holy city of Karbala it's as if he left one sacrifice to go towards another it's as if he left one service in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go towards another instead and this poem talks from the perspective of Imam Hussain as he compares his, his sacrifice that is going to come to the sacrifice that he left behind knowing that his day has come, the day promised to him by his grandfather, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him he says, now my day has come and I have no one is there anyone to come and help me? I am Hussein of the five and the last of the fifth today I have lost so much towards Yazid's wrath from the grief that races in me I'm out of breath but know that I can't give up until I embrace death I look right and left, there is no one left and no more have left to come and help me. I stand as one in Karbala and stand before me 70,000. I stand as one and stand before me 30,000. From the size of their army, my daughters are frightened. I am with the truth and yet I am left abandoned as if to be killed lonely, I am destined. I look at the tents, my sister laments, crying, where are they? To come and help me. I stand as a mountain and as lonely as its peak. I call out Zuhair and Borer, wishing they would speak, seeking to support me, my tears like rivers they leak. Wishing for warmth, I place my cheek against John's cheek. Habib, where are you? Weheb has gone too. Why don't you return to come and help me? I wish that the sun of today had not risen. By how many things today have I been shaken? Just as the earth shakes when upon it something has fallen, the fall of my brother, it left my back broken. No one understands except these stained stands. I'd give him my own hands to come and help me. My eyes, they yearn to see my grandfather Muhammad. I knew one that looked like him to the swords he was fed. Yearning to see my son once again, I look ahead, but I can't recognize his body from the blood that he's bled. That is not Ali. Where is his beauty? His wounds, they prevent him to come and help me. I look up at the sun that perches in the sky. Oh sun, you've made me so thirsty that even tears I can't cry. Why does the river not rise up and quench us? Why? Why does the river not rise up and quench us? Why? I am strangled by the air that itself is dry. All I see is heat as with death I meet. Is there no water? to come and help me. I have a pain and I swear that this pain stops time. I have a six month in, in my arms. I have a six month in my arms. Tell me what was his crime? His eyes so lifeless that in them I can see mine. Oh Allah, I have lost too much for one lifetime. My heart into two rips as blood from his lips drips. Where is the grave digger to come and help me? The house of God held captive here in Karbala. My daughters, they run around me, strangled by their fear. When the limbs of this house from its body they tear, they will find the head of Hussein raised upon a spear. The Kaaba shall fall as its women call. Where are the angels to come and help me? Where are the angels to come and help me? Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa Abdullah. Peace be upon you, O oh, Imam Hussein. I am so honored to be here today in the holy city of Karbala presenting to you from this holy city and as I mentioned earlier inshallah will be our intention and our honor to try and bring you the atmosphere that we feel me and my guests here in the holy city of Karbala as we know all of you are lamenting the tragedy of Muhammad Hussain all of you are putting up the black cloths and holding majalis in honor of Muhammad Hussain alayhi salam, wherever you are and inshallah I hope that me and my, my respected guests we will be able to do an ounce of justice toward this amazing experience that is the holy city of Karbala and bring towards you and quench that thirst of wanting to be here in this holy city inshallah over the next 10 nights I'll be joined by both uh, Sayyid Ali Hakim who will be sharing his beautiful recitation the Musaib with us uh, and I will also be joined by uh, my respected guest Sayyid Ali and Nawab where we shall be discussing Imam Hussein's journey from Medina to Karbala over multiple different um, aspects and as we know the day of Ashura itself was a horrible day 
in terms of the material, the, the physical manifestation of what happened. Imam Hussain lost everything. And yet at the same time, as we know from this amazing story, despite the fact that he lost everything on that day, despite the fact that he, so many of his family were killed, despite the fact that he himself was killed and he even lost the battle, it was him who succeeded. And inshallah, today we're going to be examining and asking ourselves uh, about the story of Ashura and the path and its path to success and what we can learn from it. I'm honored to be joined today by Sayyid Ali Nawab. Assalamu alaikum Sayyid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you so much for joining me uh, today in this Holy City of Karbala. So before we begin, just tell the viewers and tell us, you know, what it feels like to be here in the Holy City of Karbala during the 10 days of Muharram. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi min awal dunya ila fanaiha wa min al-akhirati ila baqaiha. Alhamdulillah ala kulli ni'mah astaghfirullah min kulli dhalm wa atubu ilayh wa huwa arhamur rahimin dear respected viewers and guests of the Imam Hussein TV welcome to the land of Karbala it is an honor as my respected brother brother Nuri has said before me it's, it's truly a, an honorable experience the atmosphere is undescribable I mean you won't be able to describe the beauty that you're living in you're living in, in part of the paradise or you are in the paradise between the holy shrines of uh, Sayyid al-Shuhada master of martyrs Abi Abdullah al Hussein, and his loyal and lawful brother Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas Alhamdulillah Allah has granted us once again to be amongst the zuwar and the pilgrims of the grave of Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam uh, tonight, as we all saw and noticed and experienced the changing of the of the banner and the flag uh, of the domes of Imam Hussein and Abu Fadl Abbas, alayhim salam, to signal the start of the months uh, of mourning and sadness uh, of Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam, to start of the uh, process of uh, the companions of Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam. Uh, arriving one by one to the land of, of Karbala and uh, eventually arriving and leading to the day of Ashura. So I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that first of all he accepts uh, our deeds and a'mal during these nights and inshallah that he grants us and us uh, and our dear viewers to be amongst us inshallah in the future. Inshallah. And inshallah of course in the future they will hopefully be joining us here, but for now we'll try our best just to bring the atmosphere of Karbala toward them. Uh, inshallah, I'm sure Sayyid, you'll contribute to the that as well. Um, so tell us, before we open the topic about um, Ashura being a path to success, just some brief no anecdotes and some thoughts uh, about the 10 days of Muharram and the journey of Imam Hussain Ali Salaam. Well, as the best thing to describe the, the, the 10 days of Muharram or the journey of Imam Hussain Ali Salaam and the whole process of him uh, rising uh, against the tyrant and wanting to uh, uh, bring up or liven up the uh, the path of his grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi, and his father Amir al muminin he himself said in one of his famous uh, sermons to uh, the people of of Medina, if I'm not mistaken, it says, "Inni lam akhruj ashran wa la The whole reason for me uh, rising up and uh, confronting this tyrant and what he has done or his action has resulted into the the changing the the, the whole uh, message of the Holy Prophet the whole of Islam the whole of the the slogans and the and the uh, sha'air everything that calls towards Islam has been changed as a result of of this this family so the whole reason is for me to call back people towards the path of Ahlul Bayt. So the whole process, the whole reason, uh, or what we can summarize, uh, that the events that led to the day of Ashura was all because that the Imam wanted to reform the, the, the message uh, that was at the time known to be the message, the message of Islam, but it was the, the corrupt version of Islam mm -hmm. as uh, Bani Umayy had installed it uh, amongst the Muslims. Mm -hmm. So Imam Hussein rose and as a result of that, it didn't uh, please the, the Umayyads and they uh, um, aggravated and they pushed Imam Hussein and his family until they arrived to the land of Karbala. So when we talk about Ashura being a path to success, as I said before, 
um, if a historian were to read about the tragedy uh, of Karbala on a, on, a, on a surface level, um, you look at what happened on that day. Um, Imam Hussein lost everything, family, friends. Um, you know, it was an absolute horrible experience. He even went through a lot of suffering himself uh, and at the end lost his life. Um, so when someone comes forward and says, you know what, this is a story of success. This is a story of victory. And SubhanAllah, of course, today we can see the fact that millions of people are coming and paying their respects to Imam Hussein Islam, that it, there, is some, there is some sort of success there. But in its simplest sense, why, how can we call such a story uh, a story of success or a story of victory? Uh, first of all, um, let's, let's take a step backwards and uh, uh, take a, a small historical look on the backgrounds of, uh, of the event. Um, when someone comes and says, why do we have to remember historical events? Yes. Because this is an event that happened more than 1,400 and so years ago, or more, more than 1,300 and so years ago. Um, so why do we have to go back and remember? This is history. We are living in 2018. Let's learn from our, our experiences now. Yeah. We don't need to go back and look at uh, how people lived their life or what happened in history. And I, say, I come and say, no. Um, history forms part of the identity of a nation. A nation without an identity is a dead, a dead nation. Mm. And what makes that identity a part of the identity is the historical events, the historical figures, the, 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 the footsteps or the, the fingerprints and the, the, the landmark uh, uh, inventions or the, the sermons or the speeches or the changes that they made into those nations. So uh, going back, being as Muslims and being as followers of the Holy Quran and Ahlul Bayt we always um, cross-reference and we take our um, references from the Holy Quran and Ahlul Bayt. If we go back to the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number five, uh, verse number five, sorry, says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا Allah is reminding the Holy Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, remind your nation, remind the Muslims of who? Of a previous Prophet. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا And we sent Moses with our signs and our commands. And أَخْرِجْ قَوْمَكَ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ O Prophet Musa, bring out your people from the depths of the darkness into light. These are all references that Rasulullah was directing people to a past historical event. وَذَكِّرْهُمْ A continuation of that verse. وَذَكِّرْهُمْ Who remind them? Who is the Prophet reminding? The Prophet is reminding the Muslims. Mm. Reminding them of what? وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ الله. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran says, O Prophet of Allah, and teach them to remember the days of Allah. What are the days of Allah? Every day is a day of Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran has highlighted some major events that has left a footmark into the history of mankind. Has had its effects and no one can deny these. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Rasulullah, وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ الله. And that process of reminding them the days of Allah إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِكُلِّ صَبَّارٍ شَكُورٍ And in that reminding, verily in this, there are signs for such as firmly patient and constant, uh, gr grateful and appreciative people. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Ya Rasulullah, remind them of a previous prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator who created everything, and perfected the creation is telling to his beloved messenger Ya, ya Rasulullah remind them of a previous prophet and how he dealt with his nation and how his nation received his message وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا أَنْ أَخْرِجْ قَوْمَكِ O oh, Musa, bring out, drag your people out of the, the darkness of ignorance into the light so here Rasulullah is saying, my presence amongst you is that I, my duty, my responsibility is to drag you from the depths of the darkness and guide you towards the light. Mm. Here, between brackets, 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says in description of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, in al Hussein misbah al Huda wa Safina al Najat. Verily, Hussein is the lantern of guidance and ark of salvation. Rasulullah uses that parable to describe the position of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And we are living the days and nights of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So, what are the days of Allah? As I said, every day is a day of Allah because Allah created day, created night. But there are specific days, there are specific events that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants previous prophets and specifically Rasulullah to remind the ummah. What are these days? For example, the days that new developments take place in the course of evolution. There is a specific event that differentiates the course of Allah's creations. For example, the six days that Allah created the heavens, the earth. This is one day. Or a period of geological, uh, terrestrial changes. Yeah. These are days of Allah. Why? Because there are, these are specific events that leave. Exactly. There are, for example, rise and falls of nations. When a nation rises, that affects the nation and that leaves its marks because it significantly uh, changes how people live and the fall of that na same nation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Rasulullah, remind them of the people of Musa alayhi salam. Because people of Musa, at one time they were the very lowest, where Fir'aun was depriving them of their rights. And then once they obeyed Rasulullah at that time, which was Prophet Musa, Allah raised. So the rise and fall of nations is again a day of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The intermediary stages of the resurrection day, Alam al-Barzakh, that is a very important event as well. This is one of the ayyam Allah. Life hereafter, Yawm al-Qiyamah, is, is one of ayyam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, days of torment where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings down his adab upon some people. Um, for example, the destruction of people of Ad and Thamud. That is, again, a day of history for people to remember. The companion of the elephant, Ashab al -Fil. These are events, if we go back and look, these are events that it, um, has important marks in the Very history. Very crucial for our, our, our time today, right? Ahsentum. And we learn, we learn. What happened in the Ashab al hmm. how they, at they tried to attack the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah protected. That means that anyone that wants the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the days of blessings, for example, the birthday of the Holy Prophet, Ayyam Allah, the, the birth of the migration of the Holy Prophet, Yawm al uh, the battle of Badr, which is a significant day for the Muslims, and the rest of Ahlul Bayt, Amir al Mu'mineen, Fatima al Zahra, and specifically the day of Ashura. Because the day of Ashura was the manifestation of all the signs that were in Abi Abdullah al Hussein, which were, for example, the, the Husseini, I call it the Husseini conquest, Al Fatih al Husseini, or the Husseini um, dignity. Imam Hussein showed people how to be. Dignified on yeah. the day of Ashura. Even if it means death. Exactly. And that the fact that Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura showed people the real meaning of values yeah. and their rights. So, hence, the, a historical background and the importance of remembering the day of Ashura and why the Shia, the Muslims, and non Muslims, some people hearing us today, they might be saying, okay, I know this is a uh, something to do with the Muslim calendar or the Shia, uh, they've lost one of their uh, loyal Imams or their loyal figures and they, they sit down and remember him. But when, when you say non-Muslims, yes, I say non-Muslims. Mm -hmm. Because this Imam Hussein salam, in his revolution was, uh, did not revolt only to save and protect the Shia, mm -hmm. the followers of Amir al muminin or only the Muslims, the followers of the Holy Quran and those who say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasul. No. Rasul uh, Abi Abdullah al Hussein and before him the Holy Prophet brought the message, and their message was a worldwide message. 
for the whole of humanity, for the whole of mankind. Because they wanted to save mankind from the depths of the darkness into the light. So Abi Abdullah al-Hussein alayhi salam has a very beautiful saying on the day of Ashura when he speaks to the army of Bani Umayyah. He tells them, in, in, لَمْ يَكُنْ لَكُمْ دين. If you're not Muslims, if you don't practice Islam, وَكُنْتُمْ لَا تَخَافُونَ الْمَعَادِ And you don't believe that there is a hereafter, يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ and that there is a day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to judge you. فَكُونُوا أَحْرَارًا فِي دُنْيَاكُمْ At least be free men and women in this lifetime. And act like a noble free man. A free man is noble, has characteristics of a free man. So, this is a, a, a summary of the historical background of, of why we come to Karbala, why we celebrate or mourn the events of Ashura. So tell me, say, you talk about Imam Hussein saying, um, you know, in his last few days, if you don't believe in religion or day of judgment, at least be free in this world. Uh, and, we, uh, and, and as I asked you in the beginning, we speak a lot about the success of Imam Hussein uh, and what he meant uh, to rise up for when he says he, he rose up for freedom. Can you tell us what do we mean by Imam Hussein's perception of freedom? Because in our modern day context, freedom for us, for example, can be the freedom in, 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 in the way we live in the world, to sin, freedom to, to do, do what we want. But at the same time, that isn't necessarily freedom because we're still a slave of something. Yes. Right? So when Imam Hussein says he wants you to be free, and we understand that this is not, doesn't mean to be Muslim or to be Shia, it means to be free. What does he really mean when he says, I want you to be free? And, 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 and from, from your question, inshallah, because we, we don't want to just sit down and remember historical events. Yeah. The whole reason that we sit down and remember the revolution of Abi Abdullah al Hussein is to remind ourselves and cause a revolution within us mm. so that we go back. Sometimes we see ourselves being deviated. Yeah. We, go, we go off track. Yeah. So Imam Hussein alayhi salam, from the day of Ashura until today and until, inshallah, the, the return of Sahib al Asri wa Zaman, Ajalallah ta'ala Farajah Sharif. His cause and his remembrance is a cause that people come back. It's a call for people to come back to the right path. So when I speak about that Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam instructed or call, uh, called people on the day of Ashura to be free men and women, what do I mean by free? And as you said, being free or being slave means you are a slave of something. Yeah, something I mean, is uh, controlling. Is, like, we, we, we speak about living in a land of freedom. Yes. Right where we live. But unfortunately, we are not one really free. You know, yeah. I mean, people are. They have the freedom to drink, they have the freedom to sin, they have the freedom to do adultery and, 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 and they have the freedom to cheat people as well. But that's not necessary. I don't see that as the freedom that Imam Hussein was speaking about at that time. Ahsad. Imam Hussein alayhi salam highlighted this and inshallah during the, the next coming nights we will speak about the characteristics of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, who Imam Hussein alayhi salam was and the characteristics of the enemies of Imam Hussein oh. and what made Imam Hussein revolt against such characters because such characters they carried for example Imam Hussein says when describing uh, Yazid when he was asked if he would pay allegiance to Yazid after the demise uh, and the passing away of Muawiyah Imam Hussein said someone like me Hussein from a pure lineage the lineage of prophets and messengers we read Ziyarat Warith, we say Assalamu alayka ya Waritha Adam, Assalamu alayka ya Waritha Nuh. Imam Hussein alayhi salam is the inheritor of these great individuals who left their mark in the history of mankind. Who doesn't know Prophet Adam? Who hasn't read about Prophet Nuh and, and the process and, this, and the sacrifice that Prophet Nuh alayhi salam went through? So Imam Hussein, coming back from this lineage, why doesn't he pay allegiance to Yazid? Imam Hussein is reminding us, O mankind, O free men and women of 2018 and furthermore, I did not pay allegiance to Yazid because he carried these characteristics. What are these characteristics which cause Yazid to be a slave and cause Imam Hussein to say be free? Meaning that Yazid wasn't free, Yazid was a captive, Yazid was a slave to these characteristics. These were, were Yazid. Sharab al-Khumur, Yazid is someone who drinks. 
Yazid Qatil al-Nafsil Muhtarama. People used to ask for their rights. People used to be deprived of their freedom and they used to come and ask for their freedom. Yazid, without any reason, used to kill them and destroy them. Qatil al-Nafsil Muhtarama. Yazid used to waste time, waste time, valuable time, which he has appointed himself to be the leader of the Muslims. He has to allocate his time to, to see the Muslims, what they need, the problems. So he used to use that time from the day until the night and from the night until the morning, practicing sins, basically. And everyone knows, and sins today, and being slave of the dunya, being slave of the desires and the emotions. Yes, he used to practice all of those. Listening to music until the morning, being drunk, dancing, Which as a having leader, made... Which wouldn't be doing, right? As a noble free man, yeah. regardless of you being Muslim or non-Muslim, you just meet any free man in the road and you say, would you spend your days drunk until the morning? Yeah. Whilst you would be able to go and use it in educating yourself and benefiting yourself and the society. And this is not a normal person. This is someone who used to call himself I am the leader of the Muslims. Yeah. They used to call him Amir al Mu'mineen. Well, Sayyid, I think, inshallah, over the next um, nine to ten days, inshallah, we'll, we'll, we'll really examine uh, the standard of Muhammad Sayyid Islam and how it benefits us uh, in this day and age. Well, of course, at the same time, we are here ultimately to, to, to remember the tragedy of Muhammad Sayyid, to remember the Musaib of Muhammad Sayyid, and to weep over his tragedy. In the last seven or so minutes that we have left, can you please just give us a little glimpse into the, the story of Ashura? Again, we go back to Ahlul Bayt and how they used to receive the day of Ashura. We remember uh, the saying of Imam Rava السلام, when he used to see the crescent or the moon, sighting the moon of, uh, uh, of uh, the crescent of Muharram. Uh, they, they narrate that uh, Imam, Imam Rava السلام, used to say, Inna yawm al Hussein akraha jufunana wa adhalla azizana bi ardi karbin wa bala. The day of Imam Hussein السلام, has caused our eyes to be injured, to, to shed tears and to shed blood. عزيزاً, and it humiliated our beloved, which was Imam Hussein. السلام. Here, we go back to Imam Zaman and we pay our allegiance every day to Imam Al Mahdi. السلام, and we say, we read this, this portion of Ziyarah where Imam says, إِنْ لَمْ يُجِبْكَ بَدَنِي عِنْدَ اسْتِغَاثَتِكَ وَلِسَانِي عِنْدَ اسْتِنْصَارِكَ فَقَدْ أَجَابَكَ قَلْبِي وَسَمْعِي وَبَصَرِي O oh, Imam, O oh, Grandfather, if I was not present on the day of Ashura to come and stand and protect you, protect your body, protect your family, فَقَدْ أَجَابَكَ قَلْبِي وَسَمْعِي وَبَصَرِي Today, O oh, Imam, amongst the thousands and the millions of the Zuwar and the lovers of Ahlul Bayt, wherever they are, they can stand towards the Qibla, put their right hand on their chest and say, O oh, Imam, tonight, the first night of Muharram, I pay allegiance to you. And say, my heart, my ears, my hearing, and وَبَصَرِي, my sight, I put it for your service. If I was doing anything wrong, for the sake of Imam Hussein and for the sake of the beginning of Muharram, I will seek repentance and I will come back to the path of Imam Hussein. In lam yujib kabadani and astigathatik, walisani and astinsarik. Sayyidi Aba Abdullah, Fakad Ajabaka Kalbi Wa Sam'i Wa Basari In Ziyaratul Nahiyah, Imam Al Mahdi alayhi salam says, Jaddah Ya Hussein, Falandu Mannaka Sabahan Wa Masa'a. O oh, Grandfather Hussein, I shall lament you day and night 
ولا ابكين عليك بدل الدموع دما او حسين I shall weep blood for the sake of your martyrdom يا حسين حسرة عليك and this is who this is Imam Al Mahdi this is someone who wasn't present in Karbala he says oh grandfather I wasn't present in Karbala, but I heard what happened to you. And for that sake, I will cry and lament for you day and night. But let's go back to the day of Ashura. And let's remember what Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam saw in front of her. Sayyidah Zainab says, يا حسين يوم على صدر المصطفى او برادر حسين she pointed towards the death of Abi Abdullah the body of Abi Abdullah she was standing here in the tail of Zainab here and she looks at Hussein or a body lying there on the plains of Karbala she says أأنت أخي is this the body of my brother Hussein? أأنت ابن والدي I can't believe it this is Hussein يوم على صدر المصطفى one day he was on the chest of my grandfather the holy prophet ويوم على وجه الثرى and today oh brother I see you on the plains of Karbala يوم على صدر المصطفى ويوم على وجه الثرى أأنت أخي أأنت ابن والدي أقسم عليك بأمنا الزهراء إلا ما كلمتني يا نور عيني برذر حسين I know how much you love our mother Fatima. I say, oh Imam, we the lovers, we the muhabbin, we have come here tonight between your shrine and the shrine of Abel Fath. And the viewer sitting at home, and I know how much it hurts for you to see that the millions and the thousands of Zawar are here in Karbala visiting the shrine of Imam Hussein and how you belong to be here. I say, oh Imam, we love you and we, if, we have affections for you the same way Lady Zainab carry these love and affections for you. Sayyidi, you loved your mother Fatima. Uqsimu alayk bi ummika zahra. I swear upon you for the love of your mother Fatima. Look at us tonight, Ya Aba Abdullah. Lady Zainab says, Uqsimu alayk bi ummina Fatima illa ma kallamtani ya nur aini. And then she heard a voice from the body of Abi Abdullah. Ukhaya Zainab irji'i ila al-khiyam. Go back to the tents. Falakad wallah qatta'ti niyat qalbi wa zittini karban fawk karbi. اذهبي الى الخيام واحفظي لي الايتام صلى الله عليك يا ابا عبد الله صلى الله عليك يا حسين صلى الله عليك وعلى اخيك ابي الفضل العباس peace be upon you oh wa rahmatullah sayyidina alayhi salam alhamdulillah as i mentioned opening the show has been an honor to be sitting here uh, and narrating to you all uh, both the atmosphere of the holy city of Karbala and the lamentations and the story of Imam Singh alayhi salam and inshallah after this short break I'll be joined by Sayyid Ali Hakim who will be reciting some of for us and also some uh, remembrance of the story of Imam Singh and Ashra inshallah Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh